Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Logic Ops Lab. Today, as you can see on my screen, we are going to talk about how to make decisions while writing batch scripts. As you can see on my screen, in order to make decisions whether one or more condition must be executed or not, we use these three statements. First is if statement, second if else statement, and third is nested if statements. Let's talk about if statement. So as you can see on this diagram, the control is coming from here. It's trying to fulfill a condition. If the condition is met, it goes to the code inside the body. Otherwise, if the condition fails, it executes the code after the if statement. Now let's read about the definition. The statements inside the body of if only execute if the given condition returns true. If the condition return false, then the statement inside the if are skipped. And that's what we understood from this diagram. If you're talking about the syntax, we'll have the if condition and in that we'll write the condition. And after that, we'll do some kind of work. So if that gets fulfilled, the code get inside the body executed. Otherwise, it moves to the other code. So that's how we write if statement. Moving on, the next is if else statement. So if the diagram, we'll take a close look we just take a control from here and it fulfills a condition. So once the condition is fulfilled, it goes to the code inside the body. Otherwise, it goes to the else body. So there are two bodies over here and like the previous one, if statement. So if the condition is true, we'll execute this code. If the condition is false, false, we'll execute this code. So let's read it. If condition returns true, then the statement inside the body of if are executed and the statement inside body of else are skipped and vice versa if condition return false then the statement inside the body of if are skipped and the statement inside else are executed so if you take a look at the syntax we can see if starts from here there's a condition and if it get fulfilled it executes this block otherwise it will execute this block so this is how we take decisions using if else statement. The next statement is nested if. So sometimes there is a requirement to have multiple if statements embedded inside each other. So following is the general form of this statement. So the syntax looks like this. If there would be a condition and then again there is an if and there will be other condition. Thus only if condition 1 and condition 2 are met, the code uh, inside the, uh, that the part that do something block will be executed. What we generally do is we use this go to statement with it. I mean, you can use it otherwise as well, but in nested if statements, we use a lot of this go to statements. So what is this go to statement? So the capability to hop to a particular section is provided by the appropriately named go to statement. So just go to. So go means to go somewhere and to, to at a place or, or, or at a code block. In order to achieve that, we have a syntax something like this go to label. So this label is anything that you can name and there are some commands to run. So once this is met, it will go over here. Some others command to run over here and then this is the execution. It might be a little bit confusing right now, but once we move on to the demo part, it will be clear. So let's go on to, or we can say, let's hop on to the demo part. In our demo today, as you can see on my screen, I have uh, created an alphabetical order for all the files so that it becomes easy to check whether which file we started uh, creating first and uh, they can be numbered easily. So uh, you don't have to like write all the files at the end of this course or uh, below this video. I'll give a link for my GitHub's channel and sorry, GitHub's account. And after that, you can just clone all of these files into your local and just run them. It will save you a lot of time. So let's move on, guys. We are going to talk about these four files today. If statement, if else statement, the nested if, and go to. Right click, I'll open them in a notepad. Let's talk about this first. If you can see on my screen, A has been assigned a value of 50. Similarly, B has been assigned a value of 100. And we are adding them. So let's make a change over here. Sum. We have sum. Similarly, we have sum. 
Now what we are doing is we are using this if statement with a condition and condition is equal to equal to. So this equal to equal to will be comparing the referenced value of sum with 150. So 50 plus 100 is 150 which is happening over here. So ideally this should be printed. Similarly we are comparing it with 100. So 150 is not equal to 100 then it should fail and it should not print this value. Similarly we will be comparing the string values as well. As you can see in str1 we have implement uh, we have declared uh, a value and assigned uh, assigned a value string1 to string str1 and string2 to str2. Similarly we are comparing string1 str1 with string1 and in str1 this value has been assigned so ideally we are comparing this string1 with this string1. So this should ideally print this statement. In the other state if statement, we are uh, comparing str2 with str with string 3. String 2 is not equal to string 3. So this should not be printed. So let's run it, guys. I already have a command prompt open with me. I'll just do a CLS. It was already clear, but just for the sake of it. Let's run this file s underscore underscore and then hit tab on your keyboard and enter. The first statement you can see the value of variable sum is 150, which is this and which is ideally expected because 50 plus 100 equal to 150. In the second statement, the value of the variable is string 1, which was expected. If you can see over here, so ideally, this is correct. Moving on to if else statement, in, uh, if, if you're not able to like copy everything, like just you can. Uh, uh, press a space bar and stop it and you can copy. Moving on to if else statement, we are doing the same thing with the syntax change. As you already know that the syntax is if with else. Here is one code block for if else and there is another code block for if else. I mean you can just put it over here as well but like for the sake of uh, symmetry I put it like this here and here. So let's start uh, from the very first line which is echo of and which is utmost necessary. In str1, we are putting a value, we are assigning a value string1 and in str2, we are assigning value string2. Now here, str1, we are comparing the string value of str1 with string1. In str1, there is string1. So this and this is already equal. So ideally, it should print this value. Now if we talk about str2, str2 has a value of string2 assigned and we are comparing it with string3. So ideally it should print unknown value. Let's open our command prompt. We'll do a CLS over here and we run it. What was the name of the file? It starts from t, print a tab, hit a tab and enter. As you can see, the value of variable string1 is the first one which is expected because it's equal. The second one moves on to else block. So the condition was unfulfilled in first if block, so it moved to the else block. And the previous one, the if block, was fulfilled. That's why it printed the value of string one. I think you guys have understood. You can copy, pause, and copy the code. I mean, copy in your notebook if you have a notebook. I'm not talking about like. Just copying from a video. Uh, I'll be putting everything on GitHub. You can just clone it from there. Moving on to our uh, new script. Let me do CLS over here. It's kind of straightforward. You can see that we are setting a value 50 in the first statement, uh, not statement, in the first variable. In the second variable, we are giving a value, assigning a value of 100. And this nested if, everything has to be executed in a block. If you remember, these both condition has to be fulfilled only then it will be echoed if not it will fail so let's test both the scenarios the file name is u underscore so both the values of are correct this is grammatically wrong but answer wise right logic wise it's correct both the values are correct this should be the right one now it's grammatically correct and it's logically correct as well. Both the values are correct. So that's how you work on it. Now if I make it 500 over here, what will happen? The condition does not have 
anything in else statement or anything so it should not show anything so let's run it and you can see it did not show me anything because there is nothing to run the control flow came from over here till here till here and then here it got unfulfilled it moved over here and here is nothing so that's why it showed nothing so that is how it's done guys you can pause and take a look if you want let's move on to the go to command very interesting command guys let me clean this let us understand it it's the go to statement and the condition is fulfilled then you have to give a label and then it goes to that label and executes the code so i have set a value of 100 over here and then we are comparing the referenced value of a which is 100 to with 50 so this would fail so once this will fail it will not go to label 1 and this label 1 is uh, defined over here make sure you use this semicolon otherwise your code will fail now we are doing again the same thing comparing a the referenced value of a with 100 which is this 100 equal to 100 yes it should move on to label 2 so the value of a is 100 this should be fulfilled let's make sure that this happens let's move on a bit over here hit enter the value of a is 100 which is correct because we are comparing this value of a with 100 and we have already assigned this value so if we would have given it 50 over here it would have gone gone to the different one which is the label one and that's how you can create any number of uh, labels and then you can uh, jump or hop onto those labels and execute the code so i think everything is clear to you guys over here uh, if there is anything you need uh, under, on, on more clarity on feel free to comment we'll try to address all those questions so thank you guys and have a nice day we'll see you in the next video